Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Shira cosplay tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I made my armor for Shira, how I made her headpiece, and how I created some boot covers for her that won't damage your shoes. If you guys would like to get more step-by-step -step tutorials like this one, as well as lots of cool cosplay patterns and resources, please check out our website where we do lots and lots of cool cosplay tutorials every month. Now, let's get started on building the rest of this costume. To make a template for my Shira headpiece, I roughly drew out the shape I wanted the wings on each side to be onto a piece of A4 paper. This will ensure that both the wings on each side of my head will be symmetrical. I also drew out a template for the headband section which the wings will attach to. The patterns for this entire Shira costume including her headpiece, armor and the sewing pieces are available on our website at kimpatsucosplay.com. To create the headpiece, I'm going to be taking this pattern I made and I'm going to be drawing it out onto some 5mm thick PVC foam board. PVC foam board is also known as Sintra and it's a really cool material. It's very rigid, completely smooth like PVC pipes, and can be cut by hand with a craft knife and heat formed with a heat gun. So I'm going to take my knife and carefully cut out the wings from the PVC board as neatly and carefully as I can. Once all the pieces for the headpiece have been cut out, I'm now going to take my knife and carefully cut off the sharp edges, creating a bevel all the way along the headband and around the wings. This makes it look a little bit softer and adds a little bit of detail to the headpiece and doesn't make it look like it's just a piece of cutout board. I'm also going to use my knife to carve some grooves into the wing parts of the headband, just to add a little bit more detail where the wing lines are supposed to be. Then, to shape my headband section, I'm just heating up the Sintra with a little bit of heat from my heat gun and bending it into place. Just be careful when heating PVC board, it can emit some very toxic chemicals, so make sure that you're doing this outside or with a very good respirator, because you don't want to make yourself or your pet sick. Because PVC board is already super smooth, I don't really have to do that much priming. So, to cover this, I'm going to be spraying it with some flat black primer from rust -Oleum, and I'm doing two coats just to make sure everything is nice and even and ready for paint. Now that everything has been primed, I'm going to stick the pieces together with some super glue. I'm just putting a bit of super glue on each side and then pressing them together and holding them in place. And the super glue should form a really strong bond between the two pieces of Sintra. Now let's move on to the armor for the arm. So to create the pattern for my arm armor, I'm going to be using some duct tape, some cling wrap and a pen. First, I'm going to take the cling wrap and wrap it all the way around my arm. This is to protect my arm from the tape. Then I'm going to rip off small pieces of duct tape and put them over the cling wrap and around my arm. Try not to pull the duct tape too tight. You want this to fit loosely or comfortably on your arm so that it's not too tight when you transfer it onto the EVA foam. Once your arm is fully covered, you're then going to take your pen and draw on the shape of your arm armor. Then draw a line up the center of your arm that you'll use to cut and create a seam to join the pieces together. Once you've finished drawing the shape on and you're happy with how it looks, carefully with a pair of scissors, cut off the pattern down the line that you created. And now you have a pattern to use for your EVA foam pieces. This same technique can be used to create any armor patterns on your body. Now that you've got your pattern off your arm, you can take your scissors and trim off the edges around the lines you drew so it looks nice and neat. Sometimes it's hard to get the tape patterns to lay super flat, so what I decided to do was take the pattern and transfer it onto some A4 paper so it's easier to work with. Now I'm going to take my pattern and some 5mm EVA foam and draw all the way around the edges of the pattern onto the foam. Then I'm going to take a sharp craft knife and carefully cut out along the lines on the foam. If your craft knife is a bit blunt, it can rip the edges of the foam. So using a new knife or sharpening your knife while cutting is a great way to get super neat foam edges. To join the seams of the arm piece together, I'm using some contact glue. Contact glue is a really strong glue that is great to use on EVA foam. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the one side, a little bit of glue on the other side, and then I'm going to let the glue get tacky. Tacky means that it's still sticky to the touch, but not completely dry. Once the glue is tacky, you can then take the edges and carefully line them up and press them together. The contact glue will then bond instantly and make it really strong and prevent the seams from coming apart. After the edges have been stuck together, your arm piece should be nice and round and taken shape. My arm pieces don't have any fancy attachments. I just made sure that I made the arm armor big enough for me to slip my hand through so it's really easy to slide on and off. 
to help fill the seams on my EVA foam armor pieces, I'm using some gesso canvas primer. Gesso is a kind of paste that is used on canvases to get rid of the material texture before painting. It's also perfect for filling in gaps on armor and hiding seams because it is slightly flexible. To apply the gesso, I'm just taking a little bit with my finger and rubbing it over the seams and then using some water to smooth it out. Then I let it dry completely before adding the next layer. I normally do about three layers to hide my seams. Then to prime my entire arm piece, I'm gonna be using some wood glue. The wood glue I use is called cold glue and comes in a green and yellow bottle. I'm going to apply a layer of wood glue all over the arm piece using a brush and dipping the brush into some water to help spread it. Then I'm going to let this layer dry completely before adding the next one. I do six layers of wood glue in order to get my armor pieces looking super smooth. Once all my armor pieces were now built and primed, I could now start painting. So to paint all the gold on, I used my airbrush and some Createx gold paint. I sprayed on a couple of layers of paint to make sure it was even and nice and shiny. Once again, here's a look at how my arm piece attaches. I just slip my hand through it and it fits nice and snugly over my arm. Then to get it off, I just slip my hand back out. To get the headpiece to stay on was a little bit more difficult than the arms. To do this, I had to use some warbler scraps. Warbler is a really nice material because it becomes sticky when it's heated up. So using my heat gun, I heated up the scraps and then attached two flaps onto the inside of the wing sections that protrude down from the headpiece. So once you've finished attaching the warbler pieces, they should look a little something like this. Just like two strange sticks protruding out from the bottom of the headpiece. Now that the warbler flaps have been attached to the sides of the headpiece, here's how it's going to attach to your wig. So you'll take the wig and carefully part the hair to reveal the mesh underneath. Then you'll take the warbler piece that sticks out from your headband and slide it down through the mesh into the inside of the wig, which will secure the pieces of warbler and the headpiece to your wig. So on the other side of the wig, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna part the hair to find a section of the mesh that you want to put the headpiece into and then slide the warbler through the mesh and it should stay in place pretty securely. I wore my headpiece like this all day without any problems of it falling off. Shira also has a red head gem that sits just above her headpiece. So to make this, I got some clear Cobicon gems from a craft store. You can also get these online from places like Amazon and Etsy. I took one of these clear gems and then took some red nail polish and painted the nail polish onto the back of it to give it some color. To get the gem to sit on my wig and look like it's floating, I just used a small piece of fabric which I glued to the back of the gem. And to that, I glued a small wig clip. Now I can take the gem with the clip behind it, clip it onto the front of my wig and have the gem look like it's floating on my head. To make sure his boots was probably one of the hardest parts of the whole costume, but I'm gonna show you guys how to take your regular old boots and make them look like this without actually damaging them or permanently altering them. So to start, just like I did with my arm armor, I had to make a pattern on my boots. So I wrapped it in cling film, put on some tape all around it, and then drew on the shape of the boot panels that I needed to make. Then I cut off my tape pattern and cut out all the pieces and laid them flat. To make my boot, I'm gonna be using some white, silver and gold stretch pleather. For the very bottom of my shoe, I'm gonna be using some black scuba or some black stretch fabric to go underneath. I'm just cutting out my sole panel twice so that I have one for each foot. Make sure that you add on a little bit of extra seam allowance. The tape patterns we created won't have seam allowance, so you need to make sure you're adding on maybe one centimeter to 1.5 centimeters all the way around the edge of your patterns. Next, I'm gonna take some gold stretch pleather and I'm gonna draw out my patterns for my heel and my toe onto this and then cut them out with some scissors. For the two back side panels of my shoe, I'm using a silver pleather. Once again, I'm drawing my pattern out and then I'm gonna cut it out with some scissors, leaving a little bit of seam allowance around the pieces. And finally, I'm gonna be drawing my front panels out onto some white stretch pleather and once again, cutting them out with some scissors and leaving that little bit of extra seam allowance. Here you can see why I say the Shira shoes were the most difficult part to make for the costume because there are so many pieces for this shoe because there are so many different colors and panels. 
So I've got my white front panels, the silver side panels, my gold heels and toes, my black sole for my shoes, and I've also got a white zipper to go in the back so I can get in and out of the boot covers. So now we need to start putting this crazy shoe piece together. So I'm gonna start by taking my front toe piece with the two gold pieces and pinning them together all the way along the top edge where they're supposed to meet. Then I'm gonna take my two white center pieces and pin them along the center where they're supposed to join. And then I'm gonna take the silver sections and pin them to the side of the white sections where the silver and the white join. And finally, I'm gonna pin on the gold heel section to the back of the silver section where the heel joins the rest of the boot. You're gonna leave the back center section of the boot open. Then, using my sewing machine, I'm going to carefully stitch over all the sections that I've pinned together. This is a little bit of a time-consuming process, but just work slowly and carefully and try and get the sewing as neat as possible and make sure all the pieces that need to be joined together are joined. So I'm stitching the top of my gold toe section together. Then I'm gonna stitch all the way along my white middle section of the boot. Then after that, I'm gonna stitch along the silver section, which joins the white section. And finally, I'm gonna stitch the gold heel to the back of the silver piece. Once the pieces for the base of the boot have been sewn together and the toe section has been sewn together, they're gonna to be two separate pieces. We now need to join these pieces together. So I'm going to take my toe section and the main part of my boot and from the center, pin the pieces together all the way along. I'm then gonna take my sewing machine and stitch these two pieces together. Now that all the pieces of the boot have kind of been stitched together and have formed one large piece, we can finally start putting it together up the back. I'm gonna take my boot cover and I'm gonna flip it inside out. Then I'm gonna line up the two seams at the back. And then with my sewing machine, I'm gonna stitch just along the gold heel section. Stop as soon as you get to the silver section because this is where we need to add the zip later on. Now that my boot has been joined together at the back, I can finally add in my sole piece, which is the black piece we cut out for the bottom of the foot earlier. So I'm gonna take some pins and I'm gonna carefully pin the black piece all the way underneath the bottom of the shoe. Then, once again with my sewing machine, I'm gonna stitch around this and secure it in place. Once the pieces have all been sewn together, you can use some scissors to trim off any excess fabric on the inside of the boot. And now we can flip it the right way around so that we can see what we've made. When you've pulled your boot cover back the right side out, you can then pull it over your actual boot to see if it fits. Now that I know that the bottom of my boot fits, I'm gonna have to make sure that the rest of the section of the boot fits. So I'm pulling the fabric all the way around the boot and pinning it at the seam at the back. I'm then gonna take a pin and mark off where I need to insert my zipper. I can then pull the boot cover back off and then take my zipper and start to pin it into place all the way along the back of the boot. I'm then gonna take my sewing machine with a zipper foot and start to sew the zip into place. I'm applying the zipper to the one side of the boot first. Then once it's sewn down, I'm gonna go back and pin the other side down and stitch it with the zipper foot again. Now that the zipper is put in place, I'm gonna start pinning and hemming all the way around the top of my boot and going over it with some stitching to secure it in place and make it look neat. Now that the zipper is in, I can take the boot cover and pull it over my boot again, get it nice and snug, and then zip it up at the back, and my normal brown boot has been transformed into a magical princess boot. The very front of my boot was a little bit floppy and I didn't really like how it looked, so to add a little bit more support and structure, I decided I'm gonna take a sheet of one millimeter thick EVA foam, slip it into the front of the boot, and glue the top of the boot shape around the EVA foam so it has a little bit more support and structure and looks nice and smooth and flat. I then cut off the excess foam that was sticking out around the boot and now my boot has a really strong front piece that's not flopping around. But we're not done yet. Shira's boot still has a lot of gold details that go all around the outside of the boot. To do these details, I drew out some patterns that I made from more tape that I put onto the boot and I'm cutting them out from one millimeter EVA foam. Here's a look at all the foam pieces that now need to go onto the shoe. So there's a circle for the back of the boot, a rim for the top of the boot, three layers that go onto the front of the shoe, and then two strips, one for around the toe and one for around the bottom of the shoe. 
Before we can put these pieces onto the boots, we first need to cover them with gold fabric. So I'm going to start with the two strips and I'm going to lay them onto some gold stretch pleather. I'm then going to use some contact glue and glue the strips down onto the pleather and fold the edges of the fabric over onto the EVA foam. This will completely cover the foam and make sure that it's nice and flexible and won't crack. Once the EVA foam pieces have been covered in gold leather, we can then use more contact glue to glue them around the front of the toe and all the way around the base of the shoe. We're then going to repeat this same process for the rest of the pieces of EVA foam. We're going to glue them down onto the gold leather, cut them out, then fold the pieces of leather over and glue them down with contact glue so that the whole piece of foam on the outside is covered and the edges look nice and neat. Covering EVA foam in fabric with glue can take a little bit of getting used to and can take some practice and finessing to get right, but just work slowly and carefully and try and be as neat as possible when folding the fabric back over the foam. Once all the pieces of EVA foam have been covered in gold fabric, they'll look really cool and really shiny. Now we need to apply them onto the boot. So I'm taking some contact glue and putting it all over the back of the pieces of EVA foam. Then I'm going to slowly start applying and pressing the foam pieces with the glue onto the leather and putting them in the places that they need to go. This is going to make the shoe look really really cool and add that little bit of extra detail. The last thing we need to do is apply a little bit of rubber to the bottom of the shoe to stop you slipping around while wearing it. So I'm taking a bit of rubber sheeting that I got at my local fabric store and cutting out pieces to fit on the bottom of my shoe. Then I'm taking some contact glue and applying it to the bottom of the shoe cover and to the piece of rubber. Then once the glue is tacky you can press the two pieces together and the rubber will be attached to the bottom of your shoe and you won't go slipping and sliding while wearing the boot covers. And here's what your final boot cover should look like. Now you can take it off whenever you want and use these shoes again for other costumes. And that's how I made this really awesome Shira cosplay. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our social media accounts. Bye!